Thanks so many. Uh, yeah, let's thank Alex again one more time before. We... Very nice talk. So Thomas, you can share. Okay, and so uh, so we're happy to have uh, Thomas Mertens from uh, Ghent University, who will tell us about uh, Liouville and JT quantum gravity holography and matrix models. Okay, so let me first thank the organizers for inviting me to give this talk. So I'm going to talk about Liouville and JT quantum gravity, and I'm going to try to phrase uh, Liouville gravity uh, and from the perspective of holography and matrix models. And my talk will be uh, roughly based on these two papers that have appeared last year. So let me start by giving you an introduction. So there have been many developments in the last couple of years in lower dimensional gravity, and in particular in JT Dilaton gravity. For example, we have learned how to think about higher genus and multi-boundary amplitudes, and these turned out to be important to understand the very late time behavior of correlation functions. We have learned about these replica wormholes, which are important to understand the page curve and so on. We have also learned about an exact quantum solution of these boundary correlators and their interpretation in terms of gravitational physics explored in, in these papers. And there have been many more uh, developments in this model. So I just, um, well, write down a couple of these. So for instance, wormhole traversability, finite cutoff versions of this model, explicit island calculations, bulk reconstruction, and so on. So we have learned a great deal about uh, how quantum gravity behaves for this particular model for JT gravity. So it would be interesting to extend our class of solvable models to find out how generic these lessons are. And the goal of this talk is precisely to discuss a single such model to the Liouville uh, gravity or the minimal string and to try to phrase it in the same language as we have been uh, learning about uh, JT gravity. So let me start by giving you a, a brief review on, on JT gravity. So I've written down uh, the gravitational action here. Uh, and of course, I've added a negative cosmological constant because I will be interested in ADS2 spaces and I will do holography. So what is, what is interesting about this gravity model is that you can compute a lot of the amplitudes uh, completely exactly. So I will just sketch or just give you some of the answers of, this, of these calculations. So the simplest one is the disk partition function first calculated in these papers uh, five years ago. So this is um, the case where we have a single holographic boundary, the circle here of circumference beta, which will be the inverse temperature, and we path integrate over all of the gravity fluctuations in the interior. Now there's an exact answer for this, which I have written here. So it's, you can write it as an integral over k, where k goes from zero to infinity. There's this measure k times inch two by k, and then the Boltzmann factor e to the minus beta k squared. So this is obviously a canonical partition function where the energy variable e is just k squared. Um, now it is interesting to, to do a thermodynamic limit of this, uh, of this exact answer. So this means just evaluating this integral at its saddle. So in this case, uh, the density of states, which is sinh 2 pi square root e, just becomes an exponential. Uh, and you solve for the saddle equation and you find square root e is proportional to the temperature. Uh, and, and this is an interesting relation because this matches precisely with the black hole first law. So mass versus Hawking temperature for a semi-classical JT black hole. But this answer generalizes it. This is the full uh, exact uh, canonical partition function. So the next object we will need during this talk is the boundary two-point function of some boundary CFT matter operator OH of conformal weight H that is being coupled to gravity. Uh, and this has been calculated in these sets of papers during the past couple of years. So we take two of these operators at the boundary, one at time tau one, one at Euclidean time tau two. So at the boundary of this disk, and then we do the gravitational path integral. And the answer is known exactly, and it's given by this uh, long expression. So this expression contains uh, two integrals over uh, this momentum variable k, k1 and k2. You, we have the same measure that we had in the partition function twice. We have these uh, Boltzmann suppression factors or Hamiltonian propagation factors. One of them has this time tau, which is tau2 minus tau1. So it's just the time difference between the two operators. And then the other one has the complement on the thermal circle. And then there's this bunch of gamma functions uh, and whenever I will write uh, the, the, this plus minus symbol, uh, I will mean that you have to take the product of all cases. So there's secretly four, the product of four gamma functions in the numerator. And this is the object that couples these two integrals together. So we will later on see the same structure appear for uh, Liouville gravity as well. Uh, and the last thing that I will, that I will need for, from JT gravity is uh, the exact answer for the multi-boundary amplitudes 
which was beautifully explained in this paper by Sachenker and Stanford. So what I've drawn here is an example of a multi-boundary amplitude where I have n boundaries of boundary length beta 1, beta 2, up to beta n. And they are connected in the interior through some complicated higher topological object here. And there's an exact answer for this, for this amplitude in JT gravity, which I have written down here. So let me go through the different ingredients. So first of all, you see this ZJT beta I B, B I. This is a single trumpet partition function. It only depends on one of these asymptotic betas and one of these interior uh, B parameters. And it has a very simple expression, uh, which I've written down here. You can think of these as JT disk partition functions with a hyperbolic defect B. Now these B parameters, so I have B1 up to Bn. These represent the geodesic lengths of these necks as you glue these exterior trumpets to this interior object here. And we will integrate over all of these n uh, geodesic length parameters. And we will do that with a, a specific measure, which is dB times B. Now this factor of B arises because when we glue these tubes together, we can do that with a twist. So we can twist the two tubes before gluing. And that twist parameter can range between zero and B. And that explains this additional factor of B we have here. And then finally, we have this interior object, VGN of B, which only depends on all of the B parameters on all of the geodesic lengths. Uh, and this is the wild peterson volume. This computes the volume of the moduli space of Riemann surfaces of genus G with n geodesic boundaries of lengths B1 up to Bn. And these are multivariate polynomials in all of the B squared. And they are known through uh, recursive relations by Mirzakani's work. OK, so I want to uh, phrase Liouville gravity within the same language. I want to see a generalization of this structure appear in Liouville gravity. So let me, first of all, define what I mean by Liouville gravity. So I will mean uh, the non-critical string you get by uh, coupling conformal matters to 2D gravity, or alternatively, the critical string with 2D Liouville matter and ghost CFT coupled together such that the total central charge is 0. The action of this model is just the sum of the Liouville matter and ghost pieces. So let me be a bit more explicit. Um, so this, well, the first piece is the Liouville action, which I've written down explicitly here, uh, is the standard action for the Liouville field phi. It's parametrized by this quantity big Q here, where big Q is B plus one over B, and B is the parameter you use to define Liouville theory. It appears here uh, in, in this exponential potential. Uh, and Liouville uh, theory has a central charge, which is one plus six Q squared, which will be bigger than 25. You can think of this field phi uh, as a, or this Liouville field as arising from the conformal factor uh, from, from the non-critical string because I can write any 2D metric as just a conformal factor times some reference metric and all of the dynamics is contained in this conformal factor which is governed by this Liouville action. Secondly, we have the matter piece in our theory and for most of this talk, this matter piece will be just an arbitrary CFT with central charge less than one. But for some cases, and well, I will mention that later on, we can specify uh, to the Q comma P minimal model where Q and P are integers. And this will, well, this is called the minimal string. And the reason that I will specify to that later on is because this minimal string has a matrix model description, which we can exploit. And then finally, of course, we have the ghost action, which is the usual BC ghost theory with uh, central charge minus 26. Now, uh, I will be interested in studying this model on fixed length boundaries or with fixed length boundaries, uh, because I will reinterpret these world sheet amplitudes as quantum gravity amplitudes. And because I'm interested in holography, I will need, or these world sheets will need to have a boundary of fixed physical length beta, where beta is the inverse temperature, because I want to be studying thermal amplitude. So this is just like the discussion I gave on JT gravity in the beginning. So we will need to think about boundary conditions. So for the Liouville piece, the boundary conditions that we will use are FCCT brain boundaries uh, introduced by Fatiev, the Zamlochikovs, and Teschner. And you can get those by adding a boundary action to the Liouville action, like this, uh, which is parametrized by this uh, real number mu b, which is the boundary cosmological constant. Now, when viewing the theory as 2D quantum gravity, uh, as I mentioned, the Liouville field is related to the metric by just this conformal uh, prefactor which means that the boundary length, if you compute it using this Liouville metric, is just the line integral of e to the b phi. Now, this gives you a strategy to compute uh, the fixed length amplitudes, because in the path integral, you can just do this Fourier transform over mu b, where mu b goes along the imaginary axis. Uh, you multiply by e to the mu b l. And because mu b only appears linearly in the action here, once you do this Fourier transform, you just extract this delta function 
where this boundary length is fixed to this number L, which will be, of course, then the, the, the boundary length. Uh, and this generates a delta function uh, on this boundary length. Now, there is a generalization of this that I will also need, uh, which is, uh, well, I can consider a boundary with piecewise constants, values of mu b. And then I do multiple of these Fourier transforms, and that will allow me to get to a boundary with fixed length segment, segments L1 up to Ln. Uh, I will also be interested in adding operator insertions. So I will consider the amplitude with insertions of uh, specific bulk and boundary tachyon vertex operators in this model. So this is the, the general calculation that I want to be doing. So I have a couple of boundary operators, B1, B2, and so on, separated by fixed uh, length uh, segments on the boundary, and then a couple of bulk tachyon vertex operators in there. Just to be very specific, let me write down a couple of expressions. So these are just the standard vertex operators you use in string theory. So the bulk tachyon vertex operator, for instance, is uh, a CFT operator from the matter sector, which is dressed by the Liouville piece, such that the sum of their conformal weights is one, and then you integrate it over the world sheet, or you can write it in this gauge fixed way as usual. And then you have a very similar expression for the boundary uh, tachyon vertex operator. You take a matter operator, dress it with Liouville, uh, and well, with the same constraint. So these are just the standard kinds of operators. So this is the thing that I want to be thinking about and that I want to start uh, computing. So let's start with the simplest case, which is the, the just the disk amplitude, the one where there are no additional vertex operator insertions. So we look at the literature and we look at the known disk amplitude with an FCCT brain boundary, which uh, is written down in these older papers. So this is at fixed mu b. And this is uh, what you find in the literature. So it's cosh to pi s over b, where this s parameter is related to the mu b, the boundary cosmological constant and by this formula. There's a prefactor kappa here, which I write here, but I will set it to one just to streamline the formulas during this presentation. And now we just need to transform this object to the fixed length basis. So just apply this Fourier transform. And without going through the details, this is uh, the answer you get. So this is a, what I believe a very suggestive answer. So you can write it as an integral over this S parameter from zero to infinity. There's a measure, which is cinch times cinch, as you can see here. And then there's this exponential factor e to the minus length of the boundary cosh to pi bs. So this formula is very suggestive. And in particular, it has a nice limit where it goes back to the JT uh, answer that I showed you at the very beginning of this talk, which is uh, you can take this double scaling limit where b is going to zero and simultaneously, you, you let the length go to infinity in this particular double scaled way. Uh, if you plug that in here, you immediately find that this, this uh, disk amplitude reduces to the disk partition function for JT gravity. So now let's go back to the full Liouville gravity result. Uh, as I mentioned, I want to interpret uh, the boundary as a thermal holographic boundary, and in particular, this length parameter L, I want to think about this as the inverse temperature. So it's, it's, well, it's a very easy step to rewrite this literally as a canonical partition function from which you can read off the, densities, the density of states, which is cinch of an r cosh of the energy, basically. And now it's interesting to think a bit about the thermodynamic limit of this, because that is where you would find black holes in the bulk uh, of, this, of this model. Uh, so you just do the saddle approximation, and you find this first law that I've written here. So square root e squared minus 1 is proportional to the temperature. Now, there are two regimes that are interesting. In the IR, where the energy is, is small compared to this cutoff uh, that I called one here, you'll find back exactly the JT black hole first law. But in the UV, you find that the energy is proportional to temperature. So this model reduces to uh, JT gravity in the IR, but modifies it in the UV. Now, if you think about this model in holography, where you have this UV-IR connection, this would mean that there's a qualitative change of the boundary region of the bulk geometry. So this Liouville gravity model will not be asymptotically ABS uh, like, like JT gravity is. Okay, so that was everything I wanted to say about the disk uh, partition function. Now let's uh, well add, up, add a complication uh, and go to the bulk one point function. So I take the disk amplitude and I insert one of these bulk uh, tachyon vertex operators. And again, I want to transform the known amplitude with the boundary FCZT uh, brain to the fixed length basis. So there's a simple calculation that you can do, which I'm going to uh, omit again. And this is the answer you find. So again, this has a, a structure that is very similar to the previous uh, example, to the partition, to the disk partition function. 
Uh, and you can do this integral explicitly, and I write it here. So you can do it in terms of a modified vessel function k here, where the index uh, has this label p, this big p, and this big p is related to alpha uh, in this typical Liouville way. And alpha was the parameter that I used to characterize my bulk operator insertion here. And then the argument uh, of this Bessel k function is the boundary length. The reason that I'm so explicit about this formula is that it will reappear in the next couple of slides. So uh, using this bulk one point function, we, we can study, uh, well, as a tool, we can study these multi-boundary amplitudes and try to phrase them in the same language as we did uh, those of JT gravity. So to do, to do uh, or to study multi-boundary amplitudes, we will start with the simplest case, which is the Euclidean wormhole or just the annulus amplitude. So two boundaries. And the calculation has been done in Liouville gravity by Martinek uh, almost 20 years ago. So the calculation that I'm imagining here is you have two of these boundaries, you compute the analysis amplitude, and this is just a standard calculation in string theory. So you have a rule sheet modulus tau, which is the length of this cylinder. And then you take the product of the three cylinder partition functions for Liouville matter and ghost between suitable uh, boundary states. Now, this is for, uh, well, for fixed boundary states, but again, you need to transform this to the fixed length uh, boundaries in order to make contact with our, uh, with our goal. And this is explicitly calculable for several choices of the matter sector. Uh, but now I'm going to specify it to a specific matter sector. The matter will be the two comma P minimal model. So the entire theory will be the minimal string. And the reason I will do that is because this has a one matrix model uh, description that I will exploit on the next slide. So with this specification for my matter sector, this is the answer you find for um, the two boundary amplitude. And this is a very suggestive way of writing it because you write it as an integral over some parameter lambda, uh, some gluing measure lambda tangent by lambda, and then a product of two of these Bessel K functions where the index is precisely the parameter that we're integrating over. And uh, the arguments are the two boundary lengths L1 and L2. So you can read this as two bulk one-point functions, so remember from the last slide, the bulk one-point function was precisely this modified Bessel function here. So this is readable as two bulk one-point functions where the lambda and the p parameters uh, characterizing the bulk operator insertion are related like this, that are being glued together by integrating over lambda. So this is the geometrical picture that uh, this calculation is associated to. So um, this was just for uh, two boundary loops. Now we can go to multiple loops, to n boundary loops, uh, by, by using the fact that our entire theory is given by a matrix model. So at g is uh, zero for n boundary loops, there is this very elegant formula for, from Moore, Seiberg, and Staudacher from the early 90s, where if you know just this function u of x and you insert it in here, you just need to compute some derivatives and set u equal to one in the end, you will comp compute the genus zero answer of this. Now, what is u of x? Well, u of x can be determined as soon as you know uh, row zero of e, so the disk density of states. And we, we computed that explicitly, or we wrote that down explicitly for this model. This was the cinch of our cosh uh, function. So given knowledge of row zero of e, you can, well, find this function f of u from this equality. And knowing f of u, you can find uh, u of x immediately. You plug it in the first equation, and then you find the answer. So we, we give some formulas for that uh, in our paper, but here I want to focus on, on seeing whether the structure of JT gravity is present in this calculation as well. So what I've done on this slide, I've rewritten this exact answer uh, as an n-fold integral over auxiliary parameters lambda one up to lambda n, each with this uh, gluing measure, lambda tangent by lambda that we had for the, the two loop amplitude on the previous slide these Bessel K functions that we also had on the previous slide, and then an object that just depends on these uh, gluing parameters lambda one up to lambda n. And I will view this as the definition of this object, phi zero n of lambda. Now, this is a sensible definition since this integral is an invertible integral transform. So it, it uniquely defines this object. And you can think of this as a rewriting in terms of glued bulk one point functions. So these are these Bessel Ks uh, where this V zero N of Lambda is some sort of deformed genus zero while Peterson volume. And you can find an explicit formula for it just by literally inverting this, uh, these equations uh, in terms of the Legendre functions, uh, which I write here. So all of this was just for genus zero. 
Higher genus corrections can be obtained uh, through matrix model techniques from topological uh, recursion formulas from Enar and Orantin. And using those, uh, we can give a generic proof that VGN, so a genus G, of lambda is a multivariate polynomial in lambda i squared. So this is in parallel to the statement of the ordinary wild Peterson volumes. So to summarize this discussion, at genus G, the n boundary loop amplitude can be decomposed in this way, where you do an n-fold gluing integral with this gluing measure. You have this uh, object that only depends on these gluing parameters that you can think about as being in the middle somewhere. And then you have n of these uh, bulk one-point functions that you glue to these uh, n. So these, this is in parallel to the single trumpet um, um, piece that you add in JT gravity. You have about uh, five minutes. OK, thanks. Uh, and well, I wouldn't be telling you all of that if, if uh, there wasn't a nice JT limit, which you can take. And indeed, you get back the entire sad shanker sanford procedure in ordinary JT gravity or hyperbolic geometry. And in particular, this gluing measure, it turns out that uh, you need to scale lambda uh, in this way. So lambda is going to infinity as you go back to JT gravity, and then the tension is going to one, and you get precisely dB times B. So that was the gluing measure uh, you would use in, in ordinary hyperbolic geometry. So you can think of this uh, morally as some sort of cuneiform version of hyperbolic geometry. Now, the last object that I want to be studying is the boundary two-point function. So I add two of these boundary operators, so operators of this kind, and I have fixed length boundary segments in between of lengths L1 and L2. We again look at the known um, boundary two-point function in the Liouville theory for fixed boundary uh, FCCT brains, so it, where there are two mu b parameters, mu b1 and mu b2. They're both related to s1 and s2 by, by a formula like that. Then the Liouville boundary two-point function that you find in the literature looks like this, where this sb is a double sine function. So there's a product of four of these double sine functions in the denominator here. Again, you transform this thing to the fixed length basis, but now for the two boundary cosmological constants, you find this object here. So it's a double integral over s1 and s2. It has two insertions of densities, which are sinh times sinh, e to uh, minus uh, cosh to pi b s1 l1, and the same thing for l2. And then these sb functions here that couple the two integrals together. So there are four of these sb functions in the numerator. So the structure is very reminiscent to the boundary two-point function you would write down in JT gravity, if, if you remember it from the beginning. And indeed, you can just take a JT limit of this. So you take, again, b to 0 and some suitable scaling of the other parameters. And you uh, literally find the JT boundary two-point function from this. Now, the last thing that I want to mention is that, uh, well, I've already alluded to this, uh, is that these JT, sorry, that these Liouville gravity amplitudes, they have a quantum group interpretation, which is in parallel to the way the ordinary JT gravity has an ordinary group, uh, group theory interpretation. So it is known that the ingredients in JT gravity amplitudes have an interpretation in terms of the SL2R uh, BF theory. So they, the objects are given in terms of group theory. Uh, objects like the Planck-Schrell measure, Casimir 3J and 6J symbols of SL2R, or at least some modification of SL2R. And quite similarly, Liouville gravity amplitudes arise from the Q-deformed SL2R group, where the, where the deformation parameter is e to the pi IB squared, as usual, where B is this Liouville parameter. Uh, and, and to show that, um, I want to mention that there exists a continuous set of representations for this quantum group that are self-dual. So they were first studied by Ponceau and Teschner in the late 90s. And these representations, they have the following properties. So the Casimir operator for these representations is characterized by a number s and is given by cosh to pi bs. This was precisely the thing that appeared in these exponential factors that we had. So this is the energy variable. The Planck-Schrell measure on these sets of representations is sinh times sinh. This precisely matches with our density of states. And then finally, you can compute uh, 3J symbols of suitable representations of this Q-deformed uh, group. And I'm, I'm going to skip the details here. And these 3J symbols match precisely with this object here. So this product of double sign functions. So this entire amplitude has a, has a group theoretic interpretation. But in this case, it's a quantum group, where, whereas for ordinary JT gravity, it's an ordinary group. OK, so let me conclude. So, I have investigated fixed length amplitudes of Liouville gravity. And I, I try to phrase these in the same language as we, we think about JT gravity. And there is also a JT limit of all of our amplitudes where you take the Liouville parameter B to go to zero. In particular, the 
the, well, the old string world sheet uh, genus expansion of this model gets reinterpreted in terms of a multi-universe or a space-time expansion. There are several things uh, that I would like to understand better. So the n equals one supersymmetric generalization has been worked out to some extent, but there are still some things uh, to think about. Uh, and then another point, I didn't have time to mention this, but there is a dilettante gravity interpretation of this entire Liouville gravity model in terms of a, a, a model with a dilettante potential that is hyperbolic sine function. So that is definitely something that I think, uh, well, I, I definitely want to think about this in the future. Uh, and finally, it would be interesting to, to also think about more general uh, dilettante gravity models. Uh, for instance, uh, there's been this work related to deformations of JT gravity, and also the fact that any dilettante gravity can be written as a Poisson sigma model is also very suggestive and, and studied in, in several works. Okay, so thank you very much. Okay, so let's thank uh, Thomas. Okay, and uh, we have time for some questions. Uh, so uh, yeah, go, go ahead, uh, Shoda. Uh, okay, thanks for the talk. Uh, I just had a small question. So is there a, a quantum analog of the Schwarzschild and uh, like a quadjoint orbit? I'm, I'm not aware of that. There, there is a... There is a Q-deformed analog of the Virasoro algebra. So presume, I mean, because we you want to study cohesion orbits, of course, of the Virasoro group, if there is a Q-deformed version of the Virasoro algebra, one might be able to do that, but I'm not aware of any formulas that actually do it. Mm -hmm. I see. Thanks. Let's see. Any other questions? Okay. Um, well, if not, uh, I guess we're we're on schedule. Um, so I think I should pass it off to the next co-host. Uh, but let's thank Thomas again for a nice talk. <laughs>